Hey, this is Ruben Lerner. I am continuing to work my way through the Python standard library. Still working on strings, got a lot to do with strings. So I want to talk today about ways to look for things inside of strings. So if I got a string here, S equals A, B, C, D, E, and I want to just find out is a string in there, or is a character in there? And of course, Python really doesn't have characters. We have one length string, strings of length one. So I can say here is C in S. And the in operator is going to return either a true or a false value. Okay, good enough. By the way, what if I say here CD in S? That is also true because it's looking for this string CD in S. So whether you have a one length string, length the string of length one or string of length two, you can also of course say CDE in S and that'll work too. What if I say empty string in S? Yeah, actually that's true because it is true that S contains an empty string. What if I say CE in S? So now I'm looking for the character C and the character E, but not necessarily, well here I'm looking for them in a row. But of course in S they're not there right in a row. And so I'm gonna get back a false value. So in is great, the in operator is great when I wanna look for a string inside of another string, basically look for a substring. But um, it's only gonna return a true or false value. If I want to find out where that string is in there, then I have to use a string method. So I can say s.index of c. And s.index of c is going to say 2, meaning if I say s of 2, I'll get c. Right? So you see, haha, see how this works? So I'm saying where is c and what index is c? It says 2. And sure enough, if I go to 2, it says c. What if I say s.index of cd? That'll also say 2 because it's telling me where it starts at what point in the string it starts off there. And if I say s.index of, let's say, exclamation point, it's gonna raise an exception. It's gonna raise a value error exception saying the substring was not found, which is absolutely true. Now, how can I get around this? Of course, I can trap the exception. I can say here try, and then, you know, x equals s.index of exclamation point, and I can say accept value error as e, you know, print too bad, you didn't find what you wanted. And like, that'll work. Um, and this is indeed like the right way to trap things or one of the right ways to trap things. But it turns out that there's another method that does almost exactly the same thing. And that's the find method. And if I say s.find of c, returns two. s.find of cd also returns two. s.find of exclamation point returns minus one. Meaning when find fails, then find returns minus one. Now, is this better or is this worse? I actually think in many ways it's worse because you're getting an actual value back and you might mistake that value for an index and you can actually use minus one as an index in S. Like if I say here, I equals S dot find of exclamation point, right? Well, let's, let's do this. If I say I equals S dot find of B, then I assume that I can say S of I and I'm gonna get that B. But if I say i equals s dot find of exclamation point, and now I say s of i, it's going to say e, y, e, because if we look at s, a, b, c, d, it's looking at index minus one, which is the final element there. So that's a little frustrating, so I think it's better to use index instead of find. That's really the only difference between them so far as I can tell. And now if I say help on stir dot index, take a look at this. So we see here that we can say s dot index of sub, that's the substring we're looking for, and then we can say I'm looking starting here and ending there. So watch this, if I say now s equals a, b, c, d, e, a, b, c, d, e, a, b, c, d, e, and now I say s.find of c, it's gonna tell me starting at index two. But if I say s.find of c starting at four, then it's gonna say seven. This means basically at what index can I find the letter c starting at index four in the string. So don't tell me all about index two. And you can also sort of limit it. So I can say here, for example, s find c four and six. And then it's going to say, oh, you know, didn't have it. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, that's a string. That's why it's going to give me a trouble. And it's going to say minus one. Why minus one? Because in the string from four to six, it does not appear there. So I've never actually used this, but I'm sure it's useful if you're, say, iterating over string and you want to find successive values of a substring in there, right? So it's basically doing a slice saying, I want to do S of four until six. And then we're saying, is C in that? Or I should say, S four six dot find of C. Right, so basically these two lines are equivalent. And the same thing is true for index, by the way. I can do index instead of find, but now instead of getting minus one, I'm gonna get, you got it, I'm gonna get a value error, I'm gonna get the exception. So we can count, uh, we can index, we can find, we can do in. Um, what if I have here, let's take a look at my S. What if I wanna find, where is there a C? So S.find of C, 
but I don't want it from the left side because it's going to find me the first one on the left side. If I want to find from the right side, I can say s dot r find of c, and then it's going to tell me where did it find it first on the right side. You'll never find more than one. But the question is, do you want the first one from the left or the first one from the right? And the same thing is true for our index. And I definitely use this in the past. Um, like when I'm looking for, I don't know, if I've got a, a you know domain name and I'm looking for where is the period toward the end. So I want to get like the last most part or the suffix of a file name, like extension of a file name. So that can actually work pretty well. So our index and our find, definitely useful on occasion. Here's the last uh, method I want to talk about this time, which is count. If I have s here, once again, I say s dot count of b. It's going to tell me how many times does the string b appear here. And if I say s dot count of bc, it's going to tell me how many times that appears there. All right, so you can, now it, it says here, if you look in this help, help, help stir on count. Now it says, once again, count uses this whole start and end thing. So you can explicitly say, I want to search within this part of the string, this substring, this slice. And it says here, it's non-overlapping occurrences. So what would that be like? Well, if I say here, s equals a, b, a, b, a, b, a, b. And now I say s dot count of a, that's pretty easy. What well, if I say s dot count of a, b? Well, that's going to be four also, right? A, b, a, b, a, b, b. What if I say s dot count of a, b, a? Now it's only going to find two. Because what's it going to do? It's going to say, OK, I found a, b, a. And then it's going to look starting after this point, moving forward, and then we have another a, b, a. So it's not going to look for overlapping ones, even though it could have done a, b, a, and then a, b, a here. But it's not going to do that. It's going to move forward. And if this sounds and reminds you a little bit of regular expressions, how do they search? I'm guessing, without having checked the implementation, that this actually has to do with regular expressions and finding things in there as well. So searching inside of strings in Python, super, super easy, as you can tell. We have a bunch of different methods and operators to choose from. And um, if you like this video, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your enemies. I'm going to keep going through the Python standard library one little bit at a time. I'm going to keep going through strings, then we're going to through other data structures. And if you like this, let me know. If you have questions, let me know. Leave comments here. I will be delighted to hear from you. And I'll be back in my next video with more of the Python Standard Library.